what a ride this is, creating a new podcast. So many incredible people are reaching out to me to let me know they hear me, they connect with the message, and they support me and love what I'm doing. My special love and thanks go to Marsha and Ayodele. Marsha, keep writing, keep journaling, keep taking those beautiful nature photos and sharing your positive spirit and messages with the world. And Ayodele, may you enjoy the last days of summer in air conditioning. Yes, stay cool, my friend, and thanks for the encouragement. While most of my podcast listeners are in the United States, there are listeners in other countries too, especially in Germany. Yes, Germany is listening to Let the Verse Flow on a regular basis. Thank you. I'm thrilled to have you. If you want to help this show grow, and I hope that you do, and help me reach new listeners all over the world, please share it with a friend and rate and review the show on Apple or Spotify. Your share with one friend will make a difference. All right, sending you all the love and hoping you stay on the bright side of the beat. Now, let's get on with the show. There's a voice in the back of my mind that speaks to me when I'm scared. I don't particularly like this voice, even though it speaks the truth. Perhaps it even prepares me to deal with it. But I don't care. I still don't like it. The voice tells me that my mom will die. That one day I'll get a phone call that tells me that she's passed. And on that day, this dreaded voice, the one I turned away from whenever I could, will have spoken its last word. I won't hear that voice again. But then again, I won't see my mother again either. They say life is stranger than fiction. Boy, are they right. Because I know Once I get this sad news and the voice of dread is gone, somehow I think I'll want the voice back just as surely as I want my mom back. Today I'll talk about how we carry our loved ones and all their teachings with us when they aren't around anymore. The distance could be from illness or death or just geographical location, but we miss them and want to feel close to them even though they aren't physically present in our lives. We are amazing humans, and we are capable of carrying our vision of other people's essence inside us as part of our inner body and soul their voice, their habits, gestures, smell, the sound of their favorite song. We keep a catalog of their unique perfume with us. And we can call upon their love and wisdom when we need it. Today we'll explore what it's like to travel along with someone in spirit. How to embrace their legacy and purpose so that we carry them with us even when We are in our most solitary state. I'm Jill Hodge, writer and host of Let the Verse Flow, a bi-weekly personal growth podcast where I share my special mixtape of stories, poems, and music that's designed to help you turn your struggles into strength. It's a new brand of self-improvement. The opinions I express here are my own and not a substitute for professional help. If you need someone to talk to, please reach out to a mental health professional. Now, sit back and relax and listen to my reflections from the bright side of the beat. 
Today's poem is called I'll Surf at Dawn. You were the one that I called when the news was good, bad, and in between. When the world was scary, uneven, broken at the seam. When my mind was a flood of eight million thoughts, none of them good. I'm scared, Mom, I'd tell you. What will I do, Mom, I'd ask, and slowly unravel a crumpled page, the aftershocks of an earthquake's rage. In telling, some of the worry slithered over to you. Some of the fear ferried over to you. The island of you never crumbled. You shook and shook, but never fell. You leaped over every crack and made me think I could too. The voice. Your voice yelled out in unison with every step. One by one, you said. A bridge was slowly built. A burden slowly lifted. Soft words spoken in assured sentences. What will I do when I'm left to talk to myself? When there's no mom to call. A shift is coming. I see the wave crest on the horizon. I'm the lone surfer at the dawn of a new day. On my back, the load I carry, worried wounds. Until I hear an internal whisper to calm the chaos. Old tapes playing Miles and Kirkland and Nina Simone. Beckoning me onward to face the unknown land. One where I can find you in the grooves and crevices of my well-worn heart. In this poem, I'm calling on two main images to help me comfort myself when I feel the pain and sadness of missing my mom. The two images, the lone surfer cresting a wave at dawn and old jazz tapes playing songs from my mom's favorite artists. The first image is my kind of self-comforting imagery, and the second is my mother's. And over the years, they've somehow become intertwined, and together they bring me solace. Self-comfort, or soothing oneself, is often learned at a young age. We think of, you know, pacifiers and favorite blankets and family meals. But as we grow up, we develop more sophisticated self-comfort measures. One of mine is water. I love water in all forms, morning showers, you know, bobbing in a heated pool, snorkeling on the surface of the water, and walking along a river's edge. I love to watch other people in water, too. During my glorious trips to Hawaii, I wake up at 5 a.m. on my vacation every day to watch the surfers descend on the beach. And they come in all shapes, all sizes, all ages, usually wearing flip-flops, which I love, and on huge, they carry these huge surfboards balanced on their heads as they walk towards the beach. And once they paddle out, they look like ants, kind of lined up along the wave tubes. And every once in a while, an ant takes off for the ride of their life. I think surfing is like a life-affirming action that can be very soothing. In my case, it's self-comforting just to watch. Um, Though I've never learned to surf, I spend many hours during the day snorkeling in the water. Um, But I spend my mornings watching surfers. I sort of watch them along the cliffs. Uh, It's one of my favorite kind of pleasures to do on vacation. My mom, on the other hand, is a lifelong jazz buff uh, who started with Fats Domino as a teenager and then spent the rest of her life enjoying a huge collection of music. Uh, Kenny Kirkland, Nina Simone, Miles Davis... Sonny Rollins, those were her pleasures. These were the people who really made every day um, better. And she had a sort of like encyclopedic knowledge of jazz greats, and she kept her collection 
well organized and well utilized until her recent illness. And now, dealing with her dementia, she says that jazz makes her sad. I think the the loss of jazz makes her sad. And when she hears it now, maybe she just thinks too much. And her thoughts, like, turn to loss. I like to recall better days, when she listened to jazz daily as the soundtrack of her New York life. As most of you know by now, I tend to favor, you know, hip-hop and R&B and dance music over jazz, but my mom's jazz love affair and my surfer's delight love affair have become intertwined in my mind. I recall these pleasures of ours when I want to comfort myself, when I want to remember that we both have hearts full of love for pleasure. We may have different pleasures, different experiences, but we've shared them with each other. We've respected and admired each other's pleasures. And now they do a sort of like graceful dance in my head and heart to remind me that we've lived through good times. Kirkland's keyboard magic, Oahu surfers paddling prowess, they go together. And when I doubt my ability to be strong enough to do something, or when I don't have my mom by my side to help me deal with a problem, I remember that I have these twin pleasures residing inside me, and that my mom is right there, inside me. And I know it because I can recall details that she held dear to her heart. The fact that I know them, that I feel them, brings me comfort. And I don't feel so alone. The loved ones we carry are never far from our hearts. It's a cliche, because it's true. Those whom we love and those who love us become part of us. Isn't that an amazing thing? Isn't that worth living for? To call up these loved ones, we have to turn inwards, dig deep, and find their voice within us. It's there, but we must beckon it and not be afraid of any sadness that comes. For we have been loved by them. They have given us their greatest gift. Okay, today's journal prompts. The first one, write about a pleasure that a loved one has and explore ways that knowing about their happy moments brings you closer to them. And the second, how does a loved one's favorite things live on in your heart? Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, don't forget to stay on the bright side of the beat. To check out my free podcast, head to my website, lettheverseflow.com, or find me on all major podcast apps. I'll be sharing stories, my original poetry, and music playlists that inspire this show. We're in this together. So reach out to me on Instagram.com, let the verse flow, and let me know what you think and what topics you'd like me to cover. You'll also find extras, like how I create this show and what inspires my music selections and poetry. I hope you'll tune in to Let the Verse Flow to hear my reflections from the bright side of the beat.